Are you done chewing? I'm not chewing. Have you pushed play? Oh my yes! Oh. For this very special episode, I've brought a guest, a, a professional when it comes to this book. This is my wife and this book, this story, this the movie that it's connected to, all of those things, are, were not only your favorite things as a kid, but they are still our favorite today. It's her favorite story of all time. <laughs> What's her book? The Wizard of Oz. No. The Wonderful. The Wonderful Wizard, Wizard of, Oz. of Oz by L. Frank Baum. And the, the L, I think, stands for Lyman. L Y M A N. Uh, yeah. Well, who's the illustrator? W.W. Denslow. W.W. Denslow. Uh, he only did the illustrations for the first one. Then they brought in someone else, and I can't remember. I told you that she's a professional. Uh, no, a professional would have remembered the name of the second. This book was first written in 1900. Yes. Like, not the 1900s, although yes, but 1900. In 1900. This is a popular kid's story. It's It was made mainstream, of course, by the 1934 movie. 39. Close. I was just throwing out a date, but that was not bad. 1939 movie of a similar title, not the same title, just w The Wizard of Oz mm -hmm. is the movie title. Uh, but of course, you've seen it, right? It's Dorothy Gale, blue and white plaid dress. Gingham. Gingham. Not plaid. Gingham dress with her dog Toto. You can see on her shirt um, that that's the that's the movie uh, adaptation. In fact, the book that we read is your childhood book, and it. Should I go get it? Sure. I'm going to go get it. You got it. The Wizard of Oz. This is your childhood. Now the artwork is not Dinslow, and this is based off of the movie. The artwork, so it's a little bit different, but the story is the exact same. And again, it's about a young country girl in her blue and white gingham dress and her dog Toto, who gets swept away to the magical land of Oz. And uh, many of us are familiar with the story because of the 19, 1939 movie. However, there are many differences, as there always are, between the book and the movie. Mm -hmm. What are some of the stark main differences? I mean, differences? the main difference is going to be the shoe color. Okay. They um, the Wizard of Oz, I don't know if it was the um, first Technicolor film, but it was one of the first. I think another one beat it. But um... but it's one of the first Technicolor films. Yes. And, so... and so they didn't want to they didn't want to just put silver shoes because they're silver in the book. So they Boring. made them ruby red slippers because it would look better with the contrast of the yellow brick road. And that was a great idea. It was a great idea. But in the in the book, you just kind of went went through it quick. They're just silver, silver shoes. Silver shoes. Okay, what are some other differences between the book? Um and the, the flying movie? monkeys aren't bad. True. It's just whoever has the golden cap. Which that's not even in the movie. It's not in the movie. Uh, in the in the book, you whoever wields the golden cap gets to call on the winged monkeys three times, and they're not even evil. They were just um, Who, under the control of the wicked witch of the west, which she's evil, and so they had to do bad things. Right. Um. A lot of the backstory is not included in the in the movie The Wizard of Oz, you just come into contact with the Tin Man, but you don't really question how did that Tin Man come to be? And um, one of my favorite parts in the book is the backstory of the Tin Man. Um, the Wicked Witch of the West enchants his axe and he keeps cutting off. It's probably a reason it's not in the movie because he keeps cuts accidentally off cutting off parts of his body. Cuts, well, not accidentally, it's the- Magically. It's magic. Another thing. No, my I'm time. No, I'm telling you all the difference. It's, it's my turn. No, I. But you're gonna let me talk. No, but I gotta tell you the differences of the movie and the book. You don't There's have so to go many. through all of them. Yeah, all of them. You do one more. I haven't done any. Oh well, then what's yours? The Emerald City. Yes. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. In the movie, the Emerald City is indeed emerald, which I think that's a fine thing too. But here in the book. It's not. It's still a beautiful city. Yeah, why didn't they include that? Because that's so interesting. Yeah, but like it's still a beautiful city. It's still a beautiful city. There's still emeralds. And but Which... when you come into the city, there's a big gate, and the and the guy at the gate makes everybody put on spectacles, and they lock them to your head so that then they're green tinted, and so everything that you see is emerald. Obviously, it can't be in the movie because that's no one would believe that. No, that what they do is they put the glasses over the the camera. 
like it goes like this. Yeah, and, you know, no, so, no, not okay, idea. Right. Can you cut that out? <laughs> Keeping that in there. <laughs> that was such a bad idea. <laughs> All right, out of all of the differences that we no, talked about, done. and maybe even There's some more. of the differences that we haven't talked about, what is what is one of your favorite differences? Do you need to think? Oh, well, I kind of already said that it was the Tin Man's backstory. Okay, that's good. That's good. But it might not be. You have to think. Well, it can be. One of my favorite differences, I just thought it was fun, that near the end of the book, all of the characters in Dorothy's crew, oh. nope, the lion, the tin man, and the scarecrow, they all get their own boss battles. Do you remember? Yeah. They all they all have to use... And they all get to be leaders. They all get to be leaders. Yeah, and, but they use the things that were given to them or that they discovered along the way to, to take out bosses. And well, th they slaughter them. Another difference between the film and the book is... um. The, how they got out of the poppy field. It was a bunch of mice and the queen mice. That's not even in the movie. That's is that another one of your favorites? Yeah, it's so cute. The queen mouse is such a cute character and it got cut out. It's a really odd story. What? It is odd. It's no, odd. It's, not. it's weird. You read fantasy. Yes, but this, this is, is not weirder than why any of it, the that's fantasy. not a negative yes, thing. It is. It's odd. not a negative thing. Yes. It's just, it's just weird. It's quirky. There's one time the scarecrow get, just gets stuck in the water and he's just, he gives up on life for, in a second. No, he does. He's like, okay with being he's there like, forever. All right, I guess I'm here forever. It was literally seconds ago when this happened. Anyways, uh, it, it's a quirky story. Is it a kid's story? Yeah. Is it an adult story? Yeah. Okay, so it's an everybody's story. There's a whole series of these. 14 books, 12 books, mm -hmm. a lot of books. And we're slowly collecting all of them, and we're going to read through them all together. It's going to take a long time. We're about to get to my favorite. So we just finished The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. Here's our review of it. After we read the next one, which is called... The Land of Oz. The Land of Oz. And then Ozma the of Oz. Ozma of Oz is my favorite. And those two make up the movie... The Return to Oz, which is my favorite film. And if you've never seen Return to Oz, I don't know what to tell you. That's your homework. Like... I'm telling you, Return to Oz is such a faithful adaptation to the book. Like, L. Frank Baum would have loved that movie. Would have loved it. L. Frank Baum would have loved The Wizard of Oz with Judy Garland. He would have loved it. He would have loved the Muppet version. He would have loved okay. The Wiz. The Wiz All is right. such a great movie. Stop. This is the best. Stop. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz We was... rated a 5 out of 5. No, there's no ratings here. It was a delightful read, and uh, I, I think that everyone should read it because it's just as good, if not better in many ways, than the movie, and it would be a great series to read through with uh, with your children or let your children read as they're, as they're growing up, that as well. Or you don't need, we don't have children and we still read it and we loved it, so it's for everybody. It's for everybody. Literally, you no, can... No, we're done, we're done, no, we're done. No, but I'm just saying... <laughs> we are thing. done. You can probably read this in, like, one sitting. You it's can read it short. in in one or two sittings. It's only 156 pages. And it goes... It's... Please read it. Thank you for watching this video and clicking like. If you haven't yet, click subscribe and join the Dragon Army. And then what do you want them to leave in the comments down below about this book? What do we want to know about it? Um, who your favorite is. Who your favorite is. You've got oh, you've got sure. Dorothy, you've got the Tin Man, you've got the Scarecrow, or you've got the Cowardly Lion. Let us know in the comments down below. Who's your favorite? Okay, in the movie, it's the Scarecrow. In the book, this last read-through, it's the Lion. All The entire series, it's Jack Pumpkinhead. No one even knows who that is. You will. Uh, my favorite is the Scarecrow, of course. And Toto. Okay, mine's the Scarecrow, Toto too. for the win. Mine is definitely the Scarecrow. See you in the next one. Am I part of the Dragon Army? No, because you're not even subscribed.